Good evening. Now I'd like to bring the regular evening meeting of Township of Langley Council to order. And the first item is the adoption and receipt of the agenda items. And I would ask uh, for one change, uh, H2. It's been brought to my attention that that is here for third and fourth reading. So uh, it's right now it's just there for third reading, but we'll change it to third and fourth reading. So with that change, can I have a motion, please? Councilor Whitmarsh and the seconder, Councilor Sparrow. Uh, show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed and carried. Move on to the adoption of the minutes, regular evening council meeting of July the 9th and the public hearing meeting of July the 9th. Could I have a motion for both? Councilor Fox and second by Councilor Arneson. Any errors or omissions? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? And that carries. And there are no presentations and there are no delegations and we there are no reports to the council. We move straight to bylaws for first and second reading. F1 is Development Permit Area H, Business Office Park Designation, Bylaw Number 5364 and Bylaw Number 5365. Motion, Councillor Qualley, second by Councillor Arneson. Discussion on F1. Seeing, oops, I got one. Councillor Richter. Um, <clears throat> yes, I'm just wondering, I'm looking at the uh, picture on page 7 and uh, the expansion of the, on page 7 of the report, the expansion of the tech campus into the residential area. I'm not quite sure why this is a housekeeping change. I mean, it looks to me like it means that the properties are actually going to be able to build uh, office industrial there, which they weren't zoned to do before. Mr. Safi? Your Worship, the committee plan amendment already takes care of the land use issues. Uh, so the intent with this particular bylaw is to enshrine the development permit guidelines that were referred to as development permit guidelines H as part of the Willoughby and Latimer community plans as opposed to a standalone uh, document for efficiency and, uh, and streamlining processes. It's actually a housekeeping because, as I said, the, uh, the expansion was already part of the, uh, the Latimer plan. So through this process, the area to the, to the west, just east of the creek, would also be part of the same development permit guidelines, and uh, the guidelines will then be subject to Council's approval, part of the Latimer plan going forward. So does that mean that event, so why wouldn't this bit have come forward with the Latimer plan then? And why is it being tacked on to the Langley Tech plan, Tech campus plan? Your Worship, the reason for that is because the Langley High Tech campus development permit guidelines predate the Latimer plan. So uh, rather than just bring forward the development permit guidelines for the Langley High Tech campus, what staff is doing is uh, I including those same guidelines for the area to the, to the west. Okay, so and this will go through a public hearing, I assume, right? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Fox? Yeah, thank you. Um, the, the rather convoluted west boundary uh, that takes into account the 30 meter setbacks on those particular streams there. Uh, Mr. Sefi, if I could through you, Your Worship. That's correct. So <clears throat> when this evolves, um, is that a dedicated environmental setback area that uh, could potentially have trails that go through and, and whatnot? Again, Your Worship, those, those matters are taken care of as part of the, uh, the Latimer plan, which was ado adopted by Council uh, some time ago, and does in fact include the uh, provision of setback areas with, with other amenities as, as shown. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I see no further discussion. I'll call the question on F1. And that carries unanimously. And we move on to F2. This is official community plan amendment and rezoning application number 100086, bylaw 5409 and 5410. Could I have a motion, please? Move. Councilor Davis, seconder. Councilor Qualley. Any discussion on this one? F2. Seeing none, I'll call the question. Councilor Davis. There we go. Carries unanimously. 
Move on to F3. This is rezoning application number 100477 and development permit application 100895, Archwood Developments, bylaw number 5408. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Fox, seconder. Uh, second by Councillor Whitmarsh. Discussion on F3. Councillor Arneson. Ah, yes, thank you, Worship. Um, I am going to support this. I'm going to public hearing. However, I just did want to comment. Um, there's an area, yeah, that's a good slide to show. There's actually a muse there that incorporates uh, a large stand of trees. I'm hoping that um, we can work, staff can work with the proponent to try and put in larger caliper trees to enhance that area. I notice in the staff report we're losing 500 significant trees and this would be a great opportunity. Um, we're supposed to be looking uh, to biodiversity and to create um, more of a habitat there and so this uh, park use I think could be very much enhanced by taking that kind of proactive measure. Thank you. Uh, no further discussion. I'll call a question for F3. It carries unanimously. And we move on to F4. This is official community plan amendment and rezoning application number 100153 and development permit application numbers 100937 and 100938. This is Vesta Properties, um, bylaw 5394 and 5395. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Whitmarsh, second by Councillor Fox. Uh, discussion, Councillor Richter. Yeah, <clears throat> I noticed this application includes a 26-story apartment building as well as a 34-story apartment building. Now, are these actually going to be rental units or will they be condominiums? Mr. Seffi? Uh, Your Worship, the 26-story proposed uh, building as well as the 32-story building, 34, sorry, uh, are not intended for, for rental, but rather uh, a smaller building which is located the southwest of the site plan that you see on the screen is intended for uh, rental purposes. Okay. And, and so there's no other buildings around it. Uh, like these are very high buildings from the picture on page 11. Um, how is the shadow from these buildings going to affect the the... I guess the smaller six-story buildings around it. Mr. Seffi? Uh, Your Worship, the, uh, the site design has been in consideration of, of uh, lighting. Uh, so uh, the intent is to maximize uh, light uh, during the day and, and make sure that the, the smaller buildings are not cast with, with shadows uh, as best possible. I'm very concerned about the height of these buildings. They're standalone right now. There's no other buildings in that area that high. And I'm also concerned about the amount of traffic that's going to be generated, so I'm not going to support it. Thank you. Councillor Arneson. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, through Your Worship to staff, I'm wondering, uh, we are starting to enter into the realm of taller buildings where we're looking at proposals that have 20 five, 26 stories. I'm wondering the degree to which this study may have included a view impact. I know in Vancouver, for example, there's lots of discussions now about view cones, and I know that we really haven't had that as a consideration in the past, but through your worship, maybe to Mr. Safey, I'm wondering if there has been any impact done on what this could do to affect the views of those who would be behind them, particularly of the mountains. Mr. Safey? Uh, Your Worship, there haven't been any studies conducted to date. Uh, having said that, I can uh, perhaps just remind uh, the public and council that uh, the area of 200 Street Corridor, as well as certain nodes along the intersection, along various intersections, were reviewed several years ago prior to the OCP, the current OCP that we have uh, currently in place, uh, which determined that uh, that was actually the, the proper corridor and the, the right area for, for high rises taking advantage of the, uh, the higher elevations, if you will, along the uh, 200 Street Corridor at various intersections, including 80th Avenue and, and uh, 84th and 86th. Uh, so there is, uh, I guess, some potential of, uh, of views from certain areas to, to no longer be there, obviously because of the size of the, the proposed buildings, uh, but they will be mi fairly minor and, again, uh, the proposal is consistent with the OCP and the, the prior discussions going back historically. 
Uh, thank you. I have a supplementary question. So the guidelines that are attached to the staff report refer, refer to the fact that tall buildings should be cited so that they don't intrude into other buildings' views. So I'm wondering if you could uh, maybe, Mr. Safey, comment on that. Would they be oriented in such a way? Having lived in West uh, Vancouver, I well, actually, downtown Vancouver, I know that people can look directly across into others' apartment buildings, which is not desirable. So if you could just comment on the orientation of these units so that wouldn't happen? Uh, that's correct, Your Worship. The intent is for the, the, uh, the building to the north northeast to be the, the taller of the, the two buildings and the one to the south uh, southwest to be the, the shorter one, if you will, the 26-story one. And the orientation is such that the, the views can be maximized to the degree possible with a north-south north -south orientation as opposed to east-west orientation. Thank you. Council Long? <clears throat> Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, I think if this does go to a public hearing, it'd be good for the proponent to bring some kind of 3D imaging. Uh, this is, like has been stated, uh, the first of, um, of its kind, so it'd be good for us to see what the views are and how it all fits in with that area. And, of course, that technology has been around for quite a while, but it'd be nice to see it in the chambers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I see no further discussion, so I'll call the question on F4. And it carries with Councillor Richter opposed. Move on to F5, and this is Official Community Plan Amendment and Rezoning Application Number 100163, Development Permit Application 101000, Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Church, Bylaw 5406, Bylaw 5407, and Bylaw 5414. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Qualley and seconder is Councillor Long. Uh, discussion, Councillor Fox. Yes, I <clears throat> will be fully supporting this, and I hope that my council colleagues will do the same. I think this is a, a great step forward. Um, I realize that there still may, and this project may still have its detractors, but I think that this is what's necessary in, in our community, and we see uh, nonprofits uh, entering into arrangements with, uh, with providers like this on property that is sitting stagnant um, at this point in time and not being fully utilized. So I think that this is a great uh, project. I like the interface on the north side with the five single family dwellings to try and keep the flavor of the neighborhood to the north and uh, the way the large building is sited on the south side of the uh, uh, property uh, adjacent to 72nd Avenue. And there is some services there, uh, including a dental and a small shopping um, store and so on and so forth, so people can have access without having to have uh, um, transportation other than foot or a mobi mobility assist, such as walkers, etc. So I think this is great. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Councillor Whitmarsh. Yeah, I'll certainly be supporting uh, this project. I think it's a, a fantastic project. We do certainly need more uh, rental units. Just a question through uh, to staff, through your worship. Um, what is the definition that is being used of this project with uh, of affordable how rental housing? What is the definition of that uh, being applied here? And, and how do we uh, make sure that these things remain that way for, for the long term? Steffi? Your Worship, in the, I guess reverse order, the uh, housing agreement that's proposed will uh, will ensure that the uh, operations of the uh, the building continue, the buildings continue as planned as and as currently proposed. And in terms of a definition, there isn't such definition uh, uh, proposed at this point, but rather the uh, operators have uh, their own way of def determining what affordable means. Uh, what we can do is make sure that. Uh, the rental portion uh, remains, or the rental building, the intent of the rental building remains the same, and uh, that will, as I said earlier, form part of the, the housing agreement. Okay, so so um, whatever definition the proponent is using or whoever's going to manage it, they, they set that themselves, determining what affordability is? That's correct, Your Worship, and I... I uh, have no doubt that they will use the same definitions that are applicable elsewhere in the industry and in the Lower Mainland and across Canada. And that, I believe, is as long as uh, no more than 30% of the household income does not go towards uh, the rental. Okay, thank you. Councillor Arneson? 
Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I just want to comment about the whole process and say how pleased I am that Catalyst, I believe, and the church has done a great job in engaging the community. They've had a number of open houses. I've been to all of but one of them. And so as looking at the site plan here, I can attest to the fact that as a result of the consultation with the community, there have been significant changes based on the feedback of the local residents who live in the, um, the subdivision that's just north of there. Um, I just want to refer to the fact that uh, when I was there last time, there have been significant improvements. Um, because BC Housing is involved, they have a um, conservation policy for energy, and so there's going to be heightened energy conservation, which allows those houses or apartments to be more energy efficient and therefore more cost effective in the longer term. Um, they've also expanded the green space that would be available there for the use of everybody on the property. And uh, I just know that we're all acutely aware of our affordable housing crisis. And so I'd sincerely like to thank the church for all that they have done in, in realizing their vision and putting this forward. And I guess further to Councillor Whit Whitmarsh's comments about the affordability aspect is that one thing I do understand is that every day that goes by, the cost of this uh, continues to rise with mortgage costs and uh, land costs and carrying costs and construction costs. So I'm just glad it's finally come to us and it'll go to public hearing. And I'm just glad that council seems to be supportive of this going forward, and I certainly am. Thank you. See no further discussion, I'll call a question on F5. Carries unanimously. So now we move on to bylaws for first, second, and third reading. Uh, G1 is the amendment to the election and political sign bylaw, bylaw number 5411. Councillor Long moves to refer this to refer this to next year, to a meeting next year. Okay. Is there a seconder to that? Is there a seconder? Sorry, I missed. To refer. Defer. Defer. I'll, I'll second Seconded by Councillor <laughs> Fox. Councillor Long. Well, Your Worship, there's no point in, in us trying to debate that now. We have we have a new rule that we're going to have to abide with this term, and uh, the new council will determine how the uh, how the process has played out and what it may want to do. It might want to amend it to other times. So I think, uh, to me, that's the wisest thing to do, to defer the whole thing, not refer, but defer it for a period of time for the new council to decide on its Thank you. election Any, rules. Thank you. Any further discussion? So on the deferral, I'll call the question. And that carries the Council Richter and Council Arneson opposed. This is deferred. Okay, uh, G2 is Public Spaces Regulation Bylaw, number 5298, 5297, and 5305. Can I have a motion, please? Okay. Councillor Whitmarsh, seconder. Councillor Qualley, uh, discussion on G2. Councillor Richter. Um, <clears throat> yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, number one, and this probably is more a reflection of my generation than anything else, what is geocaching? And why do we need to include it? <laughs> it's Geo the geocaching. Yeah. Geocaching is uh, sort of an activity where through uh, GPS, um, you locate a location that's on a website where you have a location, you find a little box, you put your name in it or whatever and hide it back again, put something in it, take something out. That's right. My grandson did, and I did this a few years ago. It's like and a digital treasure it's like hunt. A, yeah, digital treasure hunt. So that's what it is. So the second part of the question is why do we need to regulate this? I'll, I'll defer to staff for that, Mr. Backen. Hey, Your Worship, again, it just relates to the usage of the parks. As we're seeing, there's new and creative uses, and we're trying to be proactive and trying to regulate them so they don't impinge on other park users. Thank you. Okay. My second question has to do with the smoking part, and um, I'm very glad that we're moving to uh, limit smoking. But on the news just, uh, just in the last half hour, there's one of our um, communities in the Lower Mainland that's uh, now banned smoking, period, in all of their parks because of the fire hazard. And uh, the number of fires in the last week alone, they've had 25 fires. Uh, with people throwing cigarette butts onto um, things like bark mulch. 
And uh, so they have moved now to put a ban in place, or a ban on smoking, and um, also a fine of $75 if you're caught smoking uh, in a park. Uh, I'm thinking that's probably a pretty good thing for us to do, and I'm wondering why we wouldn't have considered banning it as well. Backen. Your Worship, historically we have considered banning, and we're trying to, to follow the laws we understand it. Uh, if the banning that was referenced was likely a health and safety matter because of experience of that municipality, it might be defendable. Uh, in our situation, we know we're able to regulate uh, these activities. Uh, they're often under other jurisdictions, uh, um, Fraser Health and, and other the provincial government as some of the other smoking issues we're facing. So it's on that basis that we understand that we're proceeding with a regulation which tightens up uh, a lot of the smoking that we're seeing, whether it be smoking, vaping, whatever the substance may be. Okay, now it says that there will be areas designated by signage. Are there going to be a lot of areas or smaller? Because smoking is not pleasant for non-smokers, right? No, our, in, our intention would be to, uh, I guess, take it to the narrowest area feasible, but to still make sure we're regulating and not seem to be prohibiting. The prohibition is what we understand can cause some issues in terms of both uh, jurisdiction and t potentially liability. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Arneson. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, through Your Worship to staff, I'm wondering as a result of the report, so I'm in favor of these best management practices, makes sense. Um, do we have a timeline and any budget consideration for more enforcement personnel that um, has to do with looking after um, making sure that these bylaws are enforced in our parks? Uh, Your Worship, it's always an ongoing challenge. Uh, yes, we, we will be pre presenting to Council in the next budget cycle. Again, further uh, staff requests for enforcement, but we're also mindful that it has to be balanced against other, I guess, other uh, challenges. Uh, in that way, we try to, uh, to target positions based on the amount of revenue that can be generated, and we're very cautious in the issues where there's going to be uh, fines potentially levied to try to link that to the position itself. So the short answer is uh, yes, we're going to try, but we understand some of the budget constraints we have because adding staff is always expensive. Thank you. I see no further discussion, so I'll call the question on G2. It carries unanimously. And move on to G3. This is extension of tax sale redemption period, bylaw number 5413. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Arneson, second by Councillor Davis. Discussion on G3. Seeing none, I'll call the question. And it carries unanimously. Move on to bylaws for consideration at third reading. H1 is rezoning application number 10496 and development permit application 100916, Essence Properties, bylaw number 5381. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Fox and second by Councillor Whitmarsh. Discussion on H1. Councillor Fox. Yeah, um, if I could through you, Your Worship. On uh, July the 9th, we received a, <clears throat> a letter from the proponent, Mr. Dollywall. Uh, of Essence Properties regarding uh, a concern that he brought up uh, with reference to um, uh, street funding elevations having basement windows and the fact that um, this was in their original plan but they were uh, removed. I'm wondering if staff could comment on that uh, and just uh, he alluded to uh, another project in Willoughby which granted final adoption with window in the basement of street fronting units. So maybe we could get clarification on that. Steffi? Your Worship, this is a townhouse development proposal and as townhouses are not allowed, permitted to have a suite, uh, historically there have been no allowances made for uh, windows or window wells, if you will, in the basement because that typically uh, lends itself well to bedrooms which then uh, could become secondary suites so that's historically been the uh, the issue in terms of uh, requiring no windows or no window wells in the basements of, of units there may have been some some previous cases where this was not an issue uh, or where this was not necessarily addressed and uh, there may be examples i don't know but uh, in this particular case and for the past little while staff has been very careful and cognizant of the fact that basements uh, are not allowed in, in townhouse developments. So is this something that I, I think my point here is are we consistent in this across the board at this point in time so that some properties aren't getting the advantage of that and others aren't? Is this a consistent application of a, of a rule or of thumb? 
Yes, it is, Your Worship. Okay, so we're not singling out one versus another. And so going back to your comment then uh, through Your Worship to there'll be no um, secondary suites allowed in these, in these townhouses, the ones in the yellow there uh, in this particular uh, situation. Is that correct? Okay, thank you for the explanation, um, and I will be supporting this. It's obviously multifaceted, and I think they've responded to many of our expectations in terms of how the parking's laid out and so on and so forth, so um, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Qualley. Thank you. Um, I th I'm going to support this moving forward, but I just would like to perhaps make a comment that um, the amenity that they've provided, the little um, putting green in the centre, um, I would just perhaps ask the developer maybe to consider in incorporating some community garden space for the development into that uh, corridor. So um, we do have a lot of um, uh, a lot of need in that area, or I guess a lot of desire in that area for people who want to have a gardening space. So I think um, while the amenity is nice, I would just perhaps ask them to consider including. Um, some community garden space for that community, not that's open to the public, but as an amenity for that development. Thank you, and staff can relay that um, that on. Thank you. So I see no further discussion. I'll call a question on H1. And that carries unanimously. Move on to H2. Now, this is bylaw number 5393, and it was, it's here for third and final. So prior to me taking a motion, I'll just ask Mr. Sefi just to give a brief explanation on the final, on the fourth reading portion of this. Uh, Your Worship, there aren't any prerequisites that uh, need to be addressed prior to Council considering the application, the committee plan amendment for final adoption. Uh, the intent of the committee plan amendment was to address a streetscape issue that was identified in the, in the Yorkshire committee plan that required the fronted road fronting the, the proposed uh, development permit site along 208 Street, which was not viable based on the existing conditions. And as such, the proponents have come up with an alternative way of addressing access and egress issues with a driveway proposed along the north boundary of the subject site. Thank you. So with that, I'll ask for a motion for third and final Councillor Whitmer, second by Councillor Fox. Discussion on H2. Uh, Councillor Arneson. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, through Your Worship to staff, this access road that's being identified in the staff report, um, could you please explain what standard the road is being built to? I'm wondering if it's a private, rather internal roadway, so we could preclude parking on either side, and uh, that it would have to accommodate em emergency vehicle access. Sorry. Your Worship, this will remain as a private uh, private road. It's essentially a driveway access uh, that meets the uh, the building code requirements for for emergency access vehicles. Uh, and so there isn't any subsequent potential for it to be used for another phase of the development in the future, or would that be something that would not be permitted? Uh, the road will be required uh, in perpetuity, Your Worship, for, for providing access to the proposed uh, development to the, to the south of the driveway access. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Long. Your Worship, happy to support this, and I was attending Willoughby Days a little while ago, and it's great to see this um, town centre not just being shops and so forth, but a real people place too, and this will certainly add to that uh, ability for people to enjoy the streetscape and each other. Thank you. So with that, I'll call the question on the bylaw on H2. That carries unanimously. And there's a development permit, application 10902. Could I have a motion for the development permit? Council Long, second. Councillor Qualley, discussion on the DP. Seeing none, I'll call the question on the development permit. It carries with Councillor Arneson opposed. Or did you wish? Okay, so it's it's... Yeah, I'll, I'll let the clerk know it's a unanimous in favor, unless you want me to redo it. You're okay with it? Okay. All right, so now we move to H3. This is official community plan amendment and rezoning application number 100165 and development permit applications 100929 and 100934. Uh, Vesta Properties Limited, bylaw number 5386 and 5387. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Fox, second by Councillor Qualley. Discussion on H3. 
Seeing none, I'll call the question. And that carries unanimously. We move on to H4. And this is uh, official community plan amendment and rezoning application number 100146 and development permit application number 100889. Uh, Vesta Properties, bylaw 5398 and bylaw 5399. Can I have a motion, please? Okay. Councillor Whitmarsh, second by Councillor Qualley. Discussion on H4, Councillor Richter. Yes, I remain very concerned about the loss of employment lands through this application. Uh, area that we had set aside in our official community plan to focus on um, office and uh, and employment only uh, is now being converted into uh, into mixed use, which means more much more residential than office space. So I'm not going to support this. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Steffi, can I just get some clarification on that? As far as job creation lands, uh, my understanding is that there is no net, net loss. Uh, or, sorry, square footage, not lands, square footage in this project. That's correct, Your Worship. And perhaps I can just uh, uh, provide additional comments in that the, the community plan called for shorter buildings, if you will, I think three stories, if I remember correctly. And the proposal is to have uh, the office buildings, the office towers, if you will, to up to seven stories, which provides for, compensates, if you will, for, for the, uh, the, uh, uh, the office spaces that are otherwise called for in the community plan. Okay, thank you. Okay, with that, I'll call the question on H4. Let me just make a note uh, that Councillor Long is absent. So it, it carries, um, is Councillor Richter opposed? I'm in favor. You're in favor? Okay. I want to get these guys some chairs. Oh, well, you don't have to do that. We, have, we can call staff. <laughs> well, I'm trying to find staff. Yeah, okay. Um, perhaps... Uh, Staff could uh, alert the uh, rec attendants. They could provide some chairs. Thank you. Okay, so that's H4 is complete. Uh, H5. Um, need a motion, Councillor Fox? Yes, I'll move. Councillor Fox moves. Is seconder to H5? Do have a second? second. Councillor Whitmarsh seconds. Councillor Fox? I'd, uh, thank you, Your Worship. I'd like to make a referral motion, if I could, please. Okay. Uh, the council refer the application to staff to address the comments and concerns raised during the public hearing held on March, July, uh, sorry, on Monday, July the 9th, 2018, with respect to density, building interface, and traffic by, <clears throat> number one, undertaking improvements to 207th Street to an equivalent municipal road standard, including pedestrian facilities with appropriate connections, driveway ramps, and transitions, to adjacent sites and streets, and by revising the form, height, massing, and setback of the proposed buildings three and four, just in brackets, those are the two, the one on the west, the one on the south, to provide for stepping up of these buildings from four to six stories away from the existing developments to the south and west, respectfully, to provide for an enhanced tra tra transitional form. I so move. Okay, is there a seconder? Okay, so I'll open up the uh, referral uh, discussion. Councillor Arneson on the referral. Yes, I support the referral. I, I think that we heard loud and clear from the residents who live across from that building that their expectations were not being met. Further, I think a lot of council members have gone to that area and checked out the roadway that Councillor Fox has helpfully indicated as being a problem. Um, the traffic flow there on the day that I was there was very much impacted by a garbage truck and a lot of confusion with pedestrians, people trying to figure out should we go around the truck, how long will we have to wait, etc. So I also think the scale of the buildings should be uh, brought down. And uh, so those height massing and increased traffic, I think, are issues that would be well addressed by a staff review. Thank you. Council Long? Well, I'm confused about the wording. It sounds to me like you're trying to, that the, the councillor who made the motion said that it's going to need to be six stories on uh, the east and the south, or was it the proposal to reduce those to four stories? And uh, well, no, I don't, I'm not expecting an answer, but I'm just, because uh, I mean, I, I, that was a discussion I thought might happen, is, uh, is that there could be, or even five stories could be re reduction, because that's what everybody was concerned about, I thought was the, certainly the western building being six stories, and of course across the street is already six stories, 
So when I went down, I thought, gee, you have the, you, you have the two six stories, you're going to have this big valley down the middle, you know, and uh, and so maybe reducing that the height of that uh, of that of that phase would be wise. But uh, the referral, I guess, you know, is going to cover that and more. So yeah. staff would come back with what. What, whatever they've discussed with the proponent to try and address that. I'm not so sure as you can widen 207th, um, from what I could see, you might be able to widen part of it, but some of it's already finished. But uh, maybe some way to restrict the, the traffic flow down there. Everyone seems to, to say at that uh, public hearing that everybody's going to get into this facility from 207th, and I don't know if that's going to work. It, it probably we won't. You've got the roundabout at the top. We should be able to find some way through the traffic planning that that folks are not entering all off of two o seven so anyway, I guess there's a variety of concerns and and perhaps this is the best way to uh, to address them there were uh, there were some things that were brought up at the public hearing that were already addressed by the proponent in terms of the phasing and I think that needs to be important and it was mentioned at the public hearing, but that should be incorporated in the report and I suppose your worship that this motion is addressing those things I've mentioned, plus everything else that came up at the public hearing? Yes, yes. So, uh, I believe that's yeah, what yeah. Uh, the intent of the motion is, is to have a better transition and, and deal Challenge. with some Challenge, good. Concerns. All right, well, okay. thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Councilor Richter? I'm not convinced that the motion that's on right now actually does address all the issues that the residents raised. I mean, other than 207th, which was loud and clear, a lot of people did their due diligence before they bought into the surrounding neighborhoods and they were told it was going to be townhouses, not apartment buildings and certainly not uh, six-story apartment buildings. So, I mean, I could see possibly going with uh, an apartment building facing out onto Glover, but I think the rest of it should be townhouses of some sort. Now, does this referral restrict just looking at apartment buildings, or does it also include the possibility of looking at um, townhouses to integrate better with the communities to the north, um, to the west, and to the south? Mr. Seffi? Your Worship, uh, I'm not sure if the question was addressed to staff or, or the mover. Uh, what I can tell council is that other than the uh, the yellow rectangular piece shown there in the middle there, uh, shown uh, as part of the subject site, uh, the lighter brown or the, the orange color areas are designated for, for apartments uh, and, and, uh, and multifamily. So the yellow piece is the only piece that uh, potentially could have been understood by some people as, as not uh, being designated for for future uh, uh, higher density uses. Uh, having said that, it, it makes planning sense in terms of the surrounding area to have that area match the area to the west as well as the east and the south and the north in terms of its use and uh, change of designation. Okay, my question I guess deals with the actual wording of the motion. Because if we're going to send this back to staff, I think it should be to address all the concerns that came out of the public hearing and not presuppose. No, it doesn't. I think you're saying you're wanting okay, to we'll keep... ask the clerk to, re to reread it if we want. Or... Councilor Fox, if you could reread your motion. Council, refer the application to staff to address the comments and concerns phrased during the public hearing held on, March, on Monday, July the 9th. Right there, and then you went further. What else do you with respect to density, building interface, and traffic? So the density is covered by the uh, requested variance, and the three of the four lots already being six stories, um, which I'm not sure that the people understood when they the three are already in the brown, and then um, I made specific reference to 207th Street. And then specific reference to form, height, massing, and setback of, of buildings three and four. Um, actually, building, uh, building, building four, the one that's on the south side, um, <clears throat> fully three quarters or plus is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, through you to Mr. Seffi, th three quarters or plus is actually allowed to be, allowed to be six stories. If, is that correct? That's correct. So, in fact, what I'm asking for in my motion here is that... Your Worship, sorry, just, just to clarify, uh, 
The designation allows for four stories. However, Council has approved up to six stories in the area around. Right, including the, the building so to the west, west. The, the areas shown with the cross, <clears throat> well, not the cross hatch, but the, uh, the dashed lines with the heavy dark black dashed lines have been approved by Council for six stories. Exactly. So this is the, the sixth story is fitting with some of the buildings to the north and the one to the west with the small yellow piece in between. So it, it's already been done with, with uh, the buildings. In fact, the building to the west, which is the Quadra building, had to be rezoned by, ver word, by ma um, variance motion of this council to go to six stories. So <coughs> it used to be yellow. Is that on there? Okay, it used to be yellow prior to it being this council actually uh, increasing it to six stories. So the request from Polygon is similar to the one to the west, but... Uh, okay, well, we all know that the, uh, the kickers <laughs> in the wording that we're actually approving, so what I'd like to know is the specific wording of what's being approved here. If the wording is to address all the concerns raised at the public hearing, including but not limited to density, building interface, traffic, 207th Street, um, building three and building four, then that's fine. That's generic enough. But it's specifically to... Uh, Okay, so revising the form height, massing, and setback of proposed buildings three and four to provide for stepping up of these buildings from four stories to six stories away from existing developments. So th that's presupposing that's the solution that should be in place. And I'm thinking staff should be working uh, with the uh, proponent on addressing the concerns, not saying that's how we're going to address the concerns. Okay, fair enough. All right, uh, see so you no know, further discussion, and I'll call. Well, you, well uh, you push your button if you want to discuss it. Councillor Long? Well, I didn't want to discuss it, but I, th I thought when I spoke that, that that was what we were voting on. Now I hear something different. And then what Councillor Fox read, I could support, but this addition of, of it's that. Not, nothing's so, been added. It's so Councillor Fox's motion. So it doesn't is. include that last part at the moment. Councillor Fox. So maybe we could hear the clerk read, read what, rather than these two, maybe we could listen to what we're actually voting on. That, uh, no, no, not you. You're an educator. Uh, Madam Clerk, could just read the uh, referral motion, please. The Council referred the application to staff to address the comments and concerns raised during the public hearing held on Monday, July 9, 2018, with respect to density, building interface, and traffic by undertaking improvements to 207th Street to an equivalent municipal road standard, including pedestrian facilities and appropriate connections, driveway ramps, and transitions to adjacent sites and streets, and revising the form, height, massing, and setback of proposed buildings three and four to provide for stepping up of these buildings from four to six stories away from the existing developments to the south and west respectively to provide for an enhanced transitional form. Okay. Hang on, relax. You'll get you'll get there. Okay, Council Long, an amendment to the amendment. Yeah, I think we can amend it, amend it by removing those last two paragraphs, which I still haven't figured out what they mean. If you could just stick with the what was said that the the concerns be addressed, and then there were three things there. So can uh, if I had a written copy, that would be better. But um, can we re remove the last? Back and you want to make comment? You worship the, the. I think what. I, if I understand it correctly, I think what we're trying to do uh, is to give, have council give staff some direction on how to address the concerns raised at the public hearing. Quite often, even in dealing with the most uh, sophisticated and well-intentioned developer, it can be very difficult to actually articulate what changes the council feels are necessary. So at this point, I think the attempt is to articulate what's, what's going to help actually bridge the gap with the developer. Leaving it defined very broadly may not re result in any sort of a compromise. It may simply just cause further uncertainty and repeated attempts to come back to the council table. But it says that, th that there's going to be, the direction is that they're going to be six stories on the east and the south. That's what I heard you read. So how does that address the concerns? 
And then it says that 207th will be built to a municipal standard. You mean that we have a road that is not to municipal standard now? Sure it is to municipal standard, but it ain't quite Mr. standard enough. So, Mr. Seffi? Mr. Seffi, can you comment? Your Worship, 207, 207A Street is not a municipal road. It is actually a private road that is maintained by the strata. So this motion is to say we move it and put another road in? Anyway, you know what? I, um, I, th I thought it would be good if we could just refer what we heard to staff and not try and, and craft a solution. So I'm having a hard time here. It's, I so don't know what the answer is. So we're leaving it as is? Okay. Okay, I'm going to call the question on the referral, H5. And it carries with Councillor Long and Councillor Richter opposed. We move on to bylaws for final adoption. I1 is highway closure, dedication, removal, and disposal. Bylaw number 5389. Uh, who moves? Councillor Davis and seconder. Councillor Fox. Discussion on. Um, the queue there. On I1, seeing none, I'll call the question. Carries the Council Arneson opposed. Move on to I2. This is highway closure, dedication, and disposal, removal and disposal. Um, Martini, bylaw 5405. Councillor Sparrow, seconder. Councillor Fox, discussion on I2. Seeing none, I'll call the question. Carries with Councillor Richter, Councillor Arneson opposed. Move on to I3, Drainage Development Works Agreement, Bylaw Vesta Properties, Bylaw number 5401. Have a motion, please. Councillor Arneson, second by Councillor Whitmarsh. Discussion on I3. Seeing none, I'll call a question. It carries unanimously. I4 is 88th Avenue and 217A Street, Sewer Local Area Service, Bylaw 5397. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Councillor Davis, second by Councillor Qualley. Discussion on I-4. Seeing none, I'll call the question on I-4. Okay, Councillor Qualley. Oh, yeah. And it carries unanimously. And move on to um, I-5, Rezoning and Community Plan Amendment Application 100073. And we'll do the bylaws 54820 and 4821. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Qualley, second by Councillor Fox. Discussion on the bylaws. Councillor Arneson. Uh, yes, thank you, Worship. Um, you, through your Worship to staff, I'm wondering, um, the staff report indicates that the original application has been what I consider to be stale dated because it's been around for eight years. So I'm wondering, um, is that not sufficient reason to allow this uh, to proceed without requiring a review of the proposal? Uh, I am concerned that potentially some of our policies may have changed, or is it the case that whatever was proposed initially would now have to be brought up to date to what uh, current policies would be in this case? Savvy? Thank you, Your Worship. A couple of comments. Firstly, there haven't been any changes that would impact the, uh, the proposal and the application, so the application is fine to proceed. Second comment is that uh, we currently don't have any policies uh, governing stale dating, if you will, of, of applications. And in this particular case, it's been due to uh, change in ownership. Uh, having said that, it's up to council to determine if, if they wish to uh, have the process amended to something else uh, as council's uh, discretion. Okay, well, thank you. Um, one of the reasons for my concern is that there's a very large reduction in the staff report of the streamside protection setback, and I have no way of knowing what, uh, why that occurred. I'm assuming that it was for lot development uh, and what kind of trade-offs were offered in exchange for that. Um, does staff have any information about that? Because it's not in the report. Uh, Your Worship, there... there there is not a report, a fresh report accompanying this particular application. So the report that uh, Councillor Arneson is referring to perhaps is, is the one that was submitted at the time of first and second reading. And typically what happens is with respect to stream size setback areas, if there's a reduction, there is compensation or offsetting, if you will, of, of the area in other areas along the, the same corridor. Thank you. Thank you. So you no further discussion, so I'll call the question on the bylaws on I-5. 
And it carries with Councillor Davis opposed. I need a motion for the development permit, number 100589. Um, motion, Councillor Whitmarsh, second by Councillor Fox. Uh, discussion on the DP, seeing none, call the question. It carries with Councillor Arneson and Councillor Davis opposed. And we move on to I-6. This is rezoning application 100468. And the bylaws will start with 5303 and 5304. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Fox, seconded by Councillor Qualley. Discussion on the bylaws? I uh, see none, I'll call the question. And it carries with Councillor Richter opposed. Uh, the development permit, uh, application number 100909. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Davis, second by Councillor Qualley. And the DP. So I'll call a question. Oh, oh did, I'm sorry, what are you going on? We're on the development permit. The development per I'm sorry, okay, go ahead. Okay, so, did, okay, so it's I-6, we're calling a question on the development permit. There we go. And it carries to Councillor Arneson and Councillor Richter opposed. And we move on to I-7. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is rezoning application number 100508, Trinity Western University, bylaw number 5369. Can I have a motion? Councillor Long moves, second by Councillor Sparrow. Uh, discussion on the bylaw. Seeing none, I call the question. I7. I forgot to put uh, Councillor Whitmarsh absent, so if you could do that, that'd be appreciated, and it carries unanimously. And if we could ask Councillor Whitmarsh to come back in. All right, I-8 is rezoning application number 100447 and bylaws, or bylaw 5294. Motion, please. Hello. Councillor Long, second by Councillor Fox. Discussion on the bylaw. Seeing none, I'll call the question on I-8. And it carries unanimously. Uh, the development permit numbers is two of them, 100816 and 100819. Councillor Fox moves, second by Councillor Davis. Discussion on the development permits? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Carries unanimously. And that's it for bylaws. Now we move to the mayor and council report. So good evening, everyone. This is our last meeting before the summer break, and we'll be back on Monday, September the 17th. On Thursday, July 4th, I'll just wait for the pictures. Here we go. I attended a book launch for the Philip Jackman, uh, The Last of the Royal Engineers. It was written by Virginia Cook. And it was held at the Langley Centennial Museum and with family, friends, and historians. And I believe Councillor Arneson, you were there with me at the time. The book outlines the journey of pioneer Philip Jackman, who arrived in BC in 1859 from Northlew, Devon, England. And uh, the Royal Engineers had a very large part in, in building our province in those early days. And uh, certainly... I can see his family and descendants uh, several generations down. Later that afternoon was the RCMP Cadet Camp graduation ceremony at the Langley Event Centre. Uh, this free three-day camp was open to children ages 10 to 12 who reside in Langley. Over the three days, boys and girls interested in policing learned about the Air One helicopter, forensic identification, police dog services, the fire department, emergency health services, and first aid. And uh, there is a three-day program, and I attended their their badge ceremony, they all got a little badge and a certificate and uh, marched, did their marching and for uh, three days of practice they did an extremely fantastic job. So good to see that a lot of volunteers helped out and thanks to all the volunteers. On Saturday, July 14th was the Langley Memorial Hospital Heritage Committee Garden Tea in the 70th anniversary of the hospital. Uh, so uh, held at Mashad House in uh, the city of Langley. On Wednesday, July 18th, we officially announced the Gap Young Stone Korean War Memorial Project at the Willoughby Community Park Amphitheater, where the world-renowned Korean percussion instrumental band, Nora Machi, was performing. The Township of Langley has been working with the Gap Young Stone Committee of the Korea Veterans Association of Canada, 
which has donated a memorial stone from the Gapyeong region of South Korea to show their appreciation for Canada's contribution and sacrifice in the Korean War. So uh, this will be um, placed at the Doubleday Arboretum, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, so with me unveiling is uh, Senator uh, Martin on the far left there, and uh, the uh, Consul General of uh, South Korea, uh, Gun Kim, on, on the right there, So uh, along with uh, members from the, the Korean, uh, Korean War veterans. The 2018 Maris Croquet Tournament in Port Coquitlam turned out to be a great afternoon with several Metro, Metro Vancouver mayors in attendance. So this is a fundraiser that Mayor uh, Greg Moore does every year to raise money for the community. And well attended, lots of fun on a nice, uh, nice warm day. Uh, this past weekend was the 106th annual Aldergrove Fair Days at Aldergrove Athletic Park. With a chilly cook-off, fast rock competition, live music and exhibits, it was another great year for the fair and everyone who attended. And uh, I had the pleasure of judging the chili and uh, there's the, the, uh, they were all very, very close. It's hard to tell the difference between first and fourth, but uh, Pepto Bismol, yeah. It was good. On Sunday, July 22nd, was the Long Table Feast on the Fairway uh, event at Redwoods Golf Course. This was a fundraising event for charity, uh, Drive for the Cure. The table held some 450 attendees and was set up on the 18th Fairway. It was a great evening, uh, so you can imagine a table, a table about over 300 feet long. Uh, excellent, uh, excellent evening. Since its inception, the Drive for the Cure Foundation has raised over $2 million through annual events. Proceeds are put towards enhancing the health, well-being, and quality of life for those struggling with cancer or neurological illnesses. Uh, upcoming events, August, the, August 4 to 6, are, will be Brigade Days in Fort Langley, and always lots of fun with that. And August the 17th, 18th, and 19th is Rib Fest at, at uh, McLeod Athletic Park, so uh, another great event. So at this point, I'd ask uh, if uh, Council uh, have anything to add. Council Long, and you were working well, hard I'm at the fair. I'm not going to say anything weekend. about me there, but I, if there's anybody out there that uh, helped, and there are very, very many that participated and helped with the Oligo Fair, so I just want to give a great thank you to them that putting their time in, and of course, all those thousands of people that attended. And I thought I'd put a plug in for something that I'm also involved with this weekend, and that's the um, Fort Langley, the first Fort Langley uh, Jazz Festival. So uh, be sure to make your way down to the streets of Fort Langley for that. It's going to be a great event. Yeah. Good. Thank you. And I also want to thank uh, Councillor Arneson for stepping in and uh, providing the opening remarks on behalf of me at the affair. So thank you very much for that. I couldn't attend that. So, okay. So with that, we'll go back to our agenda. And... We have uh, other business, and so I'm just going to clear the queue here. So, um, Councillor Davis, you have a Thank motion. You. Um, uh, whereas the township of Langley is the fastest growing municipality and it is projected Langley's population could potentially double within the next 30 years, this rapid growth can create challenges when developing new neighborhoods and finding a balance with nature. Whereas Township of Langley promotes being healthy, active community, and prides itself in parks, trails, and green spaces. Whereas research has shown that walking in forest areas decreases stress and anxiety and inspires better moods when compared to walking in busy urban areas. And whereas Marion Council just passed the New Williams Neighborhood Plan and now is the time to put more green space in, Therefore, be it resolved that council direct staff to look at putting in another five-acre park, complementing the na uh, natural beauty of nature and using the existing established trees and landscaping in Williams. So move. A seconder. Council Arneson seconds. Uh, discussion on this. Uh, council Davis, you wish to speak to it? I just want to... Um, uh, I, we all know um, that uh, uh, the motion states uh, we pride ourselves in healthy, active communities. But UBC has a healthy, uh, has a um, what they call a healthy newsletter, and they send it out. And in August, uh, the newsletter in 2017 was a study on green spaces and their natural benefits and how outdoor physical activity and mental well-being go hand in hand. This was a World Health Organization report that was co-authored by Dr. Mitida van der Bosch from UBC, and basically the findings were walking in forested areas or on trails decreases stress and anxiety 
inspires better moods. And um, children who play outside in nature are more likely to care for it as adults. And children who play or walk through forested areas, and I'm not talking about little pocket parks like swing sets, paved paths, or controlled environments. I'm talking about trees um, uh, in a natural forested area. Um, and adding another five acre forested um, natural park in Williams plan, it, it, it's the right thing to do. And I think everyone in the future is gonna benefit from it. And um, I don't wanna say exactly where it should go because I don't want to um, instruct staff to put it somewhere where it's not gonna be worked or, or used as uh, a trail. But I think on paper, now's the time to do it. And um, I think that, uh, yeah, so that's my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know we uh, had some discussion at uh, going over the Williams Park regarding extra green space. And uh, I know council discussed that time. And in my opinion, there's, there's a, a good amount of green space there. But what's really important is that there is uh, a lot of green space just across the street uh, from the Williams neighborhood plan. And I'd ask Mr. Seffi if you could just provide some, some more um, detail and information on that green space that is already in the area. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just before I, I do that, Your Worship, just a point of clarification. <clears throat> in the whereas statements that Councillor Davis provided, the Williams plan actually has not been granted final reading by Council. It's in the process of, it was granted third reading, it's currently uh, at Metro Vancouver for consideration of uh, an RGS amendment. Uh, so having said that, this plan is indicating the existing designated open spaces and park spaces in Williams plan. So as you can see there, uh, there are not only uh, the usual five acre park site, which is the, the, the green asterisk uh, with the number one identifying it as a five acre park site, but it's also a view five acre park uh, allocation of five acres as well. That's number two. And when you factor in all the other open spaces in the, the Williams plan, it amounts to 44 acres of, uh, of parks and open spaces, which is actually about just under 20% of the overall uh, Williams neighbor plan area. Beyond that, Your Worship, to the east and west, as you have referenced to the to the to the east, uh, I'll talk about that later because I have a separate slide. But to the east, uh, we notice in close proximity the other two five-acre uh, neighborhood park sites that are in the uh, Yorkshire neighbor plan area. And as you referenced, Your Worship, we we do have approximately 90 acres uh, on the east side of 216th Street currently designated as, uh, as passive park and open spaces uh, very close to the, the Williams plan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Fox. Yeah, I guess, <clears throat> I guess my, uh, my question is twofold, and one's been answered, and that is what's to the northeast of this, and uh, obviously we've got 96 acres of already pre-designated park, <clears throat> which hopefully over the course of the next couple of budgets we can start to evolve a a walking trail network such and such. I'm not sure where La Bonte Crescent kind of intersects or dissects that. I'm sure it dissects it, but uh, maybe look at how we could uh, do some uh, walking and, and uh, it's on a slope that goes down. Uh, so that could be uh, something definitely for consideration. The second thing is, and I'm not sure if, if Councillor Davis has thought about that, but um, another five acres in the Williams plan, if the township was going to look at it, would probably run you 7.5 million to 10 million dollars uh, at, at somewhere between um, one and 1.7 million dollars to two million dollars an acre, which I think is what land. If I can ask Mr. Seffi, is that what land's going for now in that area? In that area, yeah. So an additional five acres. Is, is a fairly exp expensive entity to to afford. Um, if you're asking the developers to give it up as part of a community amenity contribution, that might be one way of looking at it. But um, it you, you know you have to talk. To, you, unfortunately, you got to talk the dollar part in here as well because you just can't plunk five acres. And we get letters. Actually, we've got a letter in our distribution package about somebody who's concerned because in the uh, Southwest Yorkson, 
their property is designated for park and they don't like that fact um, because they don't think they're going to get fair market value for it. Um, and we get those letters on a fairly consistent basis. So, uh, you know, I think that there's more th simply putting this motion forward is a bit premature. And I think that it should be part of a conversation at a CPC or something like that. We haven't got fourth reading. Mr. Sefi has alluded to that. We can do that before fourth reading. Um, we can have a presentation from staff and look at the whole, the way it's all configured um, and so on. Uh, I'm not against this, but I think there's just more considerations that we need to take into account here in order that we can make a, an informed decision um, rather than just simply say put five acres in there and it's staff, you figure out where the five acres is going. Thank you. That's long. I've never seen so much preparation done by staff on a notice of motion, but it's, it's, you've even got a slide with it written on there. Look at that. Davis must have pull. Because uh, I was going to suggest that it be referred to staff to come back at a future date and tell us all about, you know, what the possibility There's going to be budget considerations. There's all kinds of considerations. So rather than voting on it tonight, I would, I would have preferred to see, and maybe I still could, refer the, the, uh, the motion to staff to come back with a more detailed. Well, you've, you've already given half the presentation now, but, uh, you know. Can't vote it down tonight. He'll take me out behind the barn. So you moving to refer this to a future? Refer to staff. To bring back. Refer to staff for a presentation. Just to refer to staff. Okay. I'll open up the amendment. It's been seconded by Councillor Richter, I believe. I heard discussion on that. Councillor Qualley on the referral. Thank you. I mean, we've dealt with this through the community consultation process, and um, there, this isn't just like simple as dropping in a five-acre park. This whole process has taken a long time of uh, public consultation. So um, I'm not sure that, I mean, I'm happy to hear from staff, but I think we just did hear from staff on, on what this looks like. If you look at this map, it's from 76, um, essentially to 80th. On the north side of 80th Avenue is industrial. So we've got about uh, four blocks by, uh, four blocks, I guess, or four blocks by however many blocks. It's not a lot of space. And there's already 10 acres of park space in there, plus the 90 on the other side, plus the 10 just a couple of blocks to the west. I'm, I mean, the rest of it's an industrial park, you know, job lands. So we were talking earlier about losing job lands. I think, you know, around the residential area where um, the parks are designated, I think that community is really well served with parks. And if you consider the 90 acres to the east, there's a lot of green space there. So I didn't hear from anybody in the, any of the public consultation or processes that parks were, were lacking or green space was lacking in this area. I think we've done, uh, staff have gone well above and beyond to save some of those um, stands of trees and, and done a lot of things to sort of enhance the uh, livability of the residential piece of this. So I'm, I'm not gonna support sending it back again because I think we've had really good public consultation on this whole process. Thank you. Councillor Richter? I'm going to support sending it back because um, Councillor Davis has lived his whole life in that area and he knows that that area is a beautiful escarpment with lots of stunning views and trees that, that could and should be protected but won't be once the development uh, um, the rezoning start coming through. And if we're really serious about protecting the things in Langley that mean something to people, then we have to do a little better, I think, in terms of protecting uh, the trees, the viewscapes, the vistas, and so on. Uh, I don't see any problem. I think Councillor Davis is absolutely right that uh, now's the time to do this. If we're gonna put another five acre park in, let's figure out where we can, where we can put it in. Uh, reference was made to the community amenities uh, and maybe that's a way to finance it. But <laughs> rather than say, yeah, we're only going to have one five-acre park there, I, I don't see anything wrong with having two five-acre parks there because the people in the future who are going to live there are really going to appreciate those parks. Thank you. Councillor Davis? Um, just, just a couple of comments. Oh, sorry, I, I should get, uh, you spoke once already, so... Yeah. Councillor Sparrow, and then I'll get back to you, Councillor Davis. Okay, that's yeah, sorry. That's okay. Um, Just the way this worked out. Yeah. Okay. No so 
I have to say I agree with uh, Councillor Qualley's comments. I think that this has been an extensive process, the uh, public input in regards to this plan. And uh, there are currently, as you can see on the... Uh, on the map here, there already are two five-acre parks in this area, um, the five-acre neighborhood park and then the five-acre um, Williams View Park, which I think is, again, um, I think staff have done a great job in sort of taking into account um, the, um, the uniqueness of this area and, and using that uh, to create something uh, special for for the uh, for the community. So I do agree. I think if you look at the map with uh, 43 acres of parks and open open spaces in this plan, uh, it's not you know it's not a large one of our largest plans. It's um, I think it's well served as well as having those 96 acres that are adjacent to it. So I'm I'm cautious as was stated. I don't think it's as easy as just dropping another five acre park in um, and um, and not having that be affecting the the process and the public input that has already been done up to this point. So um, I I think uh, I'm going to leave it as it is and um, uh, not support it moving forward to staff. Thank you, Councillor Arneson. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I want to support this. Actually, I think that this shows a great deal of vision. Um, sometimes I think we get caught up in just looking at something that's happening in real time and saying, okay, well, this is our expectation, and we rationalize things and think it makes a lot of sense. But if you look 50 years ahead and then look back and say, what were we thinking when we didn't save more of our natural environment? If we don't save it now, we're not going to have an opportunity to do anything about it. So I think we need to have a little bit more vision and more foresight. Uh, we could not have had the benefit of all the wonderful parks that we do in our region if somebody at some point hadn't said, you know what, we need to really look at substantial forest stands. I understand pocket parks, they're fine, five acres. We lose a lot of habitat here. We are increasingly, look next door to what is there. And I understand we're saying, okay, we're offsetting it by these other park areas. But we are not going to get another chance to put in another park. And I agree that we should be doing our utmost because our community wants that. I did hear from people who want more green space in Willoughby. And so we may have thought we met some threshold, but I think we can do better. Thank you. Councilor Davis? Actually, you don't have to wait 50 years. If you just look over here to Yorkson, a lot of people walk down through and come down the hill and walk um, along the strip down here to 76 because there's big trees and that sort of thing. These two parks here are school sites. I'm not talking about a school site. Um, I believe that is now is the time to drop five acres into this because you're not going to drop it into this Yorks in here, they don't have enough park space. We screwed up there. Wait a minute, sorry. We didn't screw up, but we don't have enough park space. They walk down and do their walking all over and down into, uh, into this area where that excar excarpment is. 60 or 150 feet south of this, three days ago, we were harvesting our silage, and there was two big, fat deers. Like, I know that the deers aren't going to live here when the house is... I know, I know they're not going to. This piece of property that's mentioned, this nice six acres over here, that's where the deers are going to maybe go. Um, uh, I've got... Um, 43 acres. Okay, it's been mentioned there's 43 acres. Okay, we've got a neighborhood park, five acres, uh, up on the screen here on the top. A Williams View Park, five acres. A water course compensation area greenway. It's 14 acres. But some of that, you're not going to want to walk through. I know, I've walked through it. Um, you've got a pocket park, an acre and a half. You've got a wildlife habitat patch. Is that a third of an acre? Who's, and, and who's going to be walking through a habitat patch? They shouldn't be. Neighborhood landmarks, that's not a park. Neighborhood forest meadows, two. And I don't know where, that's number eight. That's right in this area. And, it, okay, um, this number one, 
this park here that I referred to is pretty close to the school. It might even, I don't know, they might change the school site down onto that and make, and that might be part of it. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a park. Like if you've been to uh, Mill Lake in Abbotsford, you drive right along the street and somebody had the foresight to, to leave the trees there. And you can, even, even if you're cutting cross country there, uh, there's a five acre, there's a, it's, it's a park. You get a feeling when you walk through it. So if you add all these things up, sure, it sounds kind of impressive, but those are, there, there's no way it's 43 acres. Um, it's a lot less than that. Um, I guess my point is, around here and up in the top part, the north part, there's not going to be a lot more parks. And there's an escarpment along there <clears throat> that is, once it's gone... Where are you going to put up? So, so we talk about livable communities. How many people? Another thing is, I want to get this in because I might not get elected. <laughs> okay, um, trees by the acre fall down not too far from there. Look at Terra, just overnight gone. And that was, okay. So anyhow, I'm I'm starting to ramble, and I don't want to do that. Um, because everyone's going to get upset with me and not support my park. So I, I guess what I'm saying is um, I don't think that you can put an extra five acres in there and in 10 years, 20 years, we're going to say, oh, that was a disaster. Why did we do that stupid thing? So that my comments. Thanks. Thank you. Any further discussion on the referral? Um, hey, I, I'm a lover of parks. I think they're great. And uh, 96 acres right next to this of, of uh, Passive Park, is a huge amenity to this area. I look at this map and it has 43 acres and some of those are, are small pieces that have certain uses that may not be exactly what you consider a park, but that's fine, that's fair, but there are still some significant pieces in this neighborhood uh, looking at the size of the neighborhoods. I, I can't support the referral. I, I think we have lots of parks there and, uh, and we did a good dis had a good discussion at third reading on this and um, went along with the plan here now to change at this point. I, I can't support. So with that, I'm going to call the question on the referral on the M1. And the referral uh, carries with uh, Councillor Whitmarsh, Mayor Froze, Councillor Qualley, Councillor Sparrow opposed. So is there any other business? Oh, sorry, there's actually a huge list here. I don't know that was. I'm going to clear the queue and start over again. If you want to push your button, thanks. Okay, Councillor Davis, other business? Yes, uh, items for distribution to council, July 23rd, um, item 11, uh, from the Alder Grove Community Association, um, signed Diane Cask. It uh, goes over and uh, does a lot of bragging about the new pool, and I'd like to uh, send this article to staff to see that it goes to either Parks and Recs, because it's got... Um, it's got uh, things in here of what we can do, um, and even though that it's uh, it's early now, the pool's just been open, and we haven't even we're starting to learn. But it's it gives some real good suggestions here from the Alder Grove Community Association on what we can be doing with the pool, maybe a little opening a little earlier uh, as time goes on. But we're gonna is a, there's a learning uh, curve there. I'd just like to send that to staff so that they can. Have a look at it. Thanks. So destruction staff. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Arneson? Yes, thank you, Worship. I have two notices of motion. Okay. So the first one is, um, whereas manufactured home parks provide a unique and affordable residential opportunity within the community, especially for older adults, but residents' tenure is undermined by lack of security, by third-party ownership, and changing market conditions, and whereas the redevelopment of existing manufactured home parks creates housing insecurity, and whereas the TOL Housing Action Plan adopted by Council in 2013 identifies a short-term objective of enhanced consideration with respect to the redevelopment development of manufactured home parks to include an array of affordable options and whereas it is necessary and desirable to ensure that seniors have a range of opportunities upon rezoning and redevelopment further to the Township of Langley's Manufactured Home Park Council Policy number 07-121 and whereas these opportunities should either equal or approximate the lifestyle and relative economic framework derived from a manufactured home park therefore 
therefore, be it resolved that Council direct staff to review the current changes to the Brookswood Fernridge OCP in order to provide concrete options for a future Council's consideration for the siting of a senior's village development component either on township owned or private lands to be advanced with financial partnering with senior levels of government and community amenity charges in order to build affordable housing for our most vulnerable residents who may be displaced by the redevelopment of any existing manufactured home park. And the second one is, where is the township of Langley is currently the fastest growing community by population in Metro Vancouver? And where is the township's population grew by 12.6% between 2011 and 2016, according to census data, and that population increase is anticipated to remain at 3% or more annually for the foreseeable future, and whereas the township is increasingly approving higher buildings with intensified density, which includes approved and potential high-rise developments, which will add significantly more residents over the next few years, and whereas Langley Memorial Hospital is an aging institution with a limited footprint, which is currently capable of only incremental upgrades to meet current demand, and whereas good public policy requires that local governments work collaboratively with senior levels of government in order to ensure the health and safety of local residents and access to adequate local health care in a timely manner. Therefore, be it resolved that Council direct staff to correspond with the Ministry of Health and Fraser Health Authority senior executives in order to outline our concerns and to facilitate a framework for dialogue and focused discussions regarding collaboration between our levels of government and the Fraser Health Authority in order to ensure that local development is rationally tied to the ability to provide adequate health care through the construction of a new hospital in Langley Township or its near vicinity in the foreseeable future. Thank you. Council Long? Your Worship, in the package, um, what is this one, July 19th, item 21, there was a response from staff, and it's quite accurate, I can see it, regarding the con some concerns in Willoughby, uh, intersection of 204th and 80th, and 82nd and 204th, uh, and 208th not having posted speed signs. So I, I, I would like to refer that to staff to see. I mean, it's obvious in, in the first instance where it talks about the intersection and this person is asking for a crosswalk. You run the math on it, the crosswalk isn't warranted because, you know, it hasn't quite been built out perhaps or whatever reasons, but there are some concerns there and eventually perhaps a crosswalk will be uh, warranted by the specs, but right now I think they should be looking at it a bit more closely. I mean, I think they've given the, the standard res response, but I'd like them to look more into that. And then it mentions that there are no speed signs, and uh, so could we not put up some reminders of speed signs there? Maybe those other things that tell people when they're speeding, you know, the, the light goes off. So I'd just like to refer that to staff. That's item 21. Okay. So and maybe they could respond back to council with what they could possibly do. Thank you. Just by direction, Mr. Backen. Okay, is there any other business? Seeing none, motion to turn. Donation. Councilor Davis moves, second by Councilor Fox. All those in favor? Opposed and carried. This uh, meeting is terminated. Uh, we'll just give a few minutes, we'll start the public hearing up. <laughs>